Hi everyone, this is Valerie and this is part two and the practical video about the ideal customer profile. If you haven't checked the previous video with the theory, please go and check it and go back here. In this video, we're going to speak about how you're going to define the ideal customer profile for your business and then how you can apply it to start growing. Step one, choose what type of segment you're going to target. I mean, choose the type of companies you're going to work with. For example, that can be SaaS companies, fintech companies, edtech companies. Well, these segments should be pretty much the same for your ideal customer profile. Well, it doesn't mean you're going to define only one segment. You can choose two. Two. For example, with our product, we chose SaaS companies and e-commerce, but simply because they have one thing in common. They make money online. Step two, you're going to choose the top companies from that segment, I mean the top companies for your business, the potential customers you're going to have. So those are your ideal customers. You take the companies and just describe them. Answer a few questions while describing that type of companies. Those questions can be around the size of the company, the revenue, the technologies they're using, the values they're sharing, and so on. So again, you just take some characteristics of the ideal customer profile. In other words, you are profiling them. And actually this step, it is very useful to go to the teams that already work with some client of yours and ask them to draw the anti-ideal customer profile. So a company that is less likely, unfortunately, to get the benefit of your product. So this exercise is going to give you the contrast between the ideal profile and the profile that you shouldn't target at. Step three, you're going to describe the ideal customer profile, but you are also going to add some business points that are hugely important for them. And here you definitely are going to start with pains they may have and how your product can help them get freed out of these pains. At this step, it is hugely important to list their targets, like what is the success for them? How sensitive to the pricing they are? If uh, they are going to have any objections and if you shortlist the objections, definitely are going to work on them. That is a really, really important exercise and it's going to affect your marketing communication as well. So your landing pages should be as clear as possible. And you're also going to describe the way they take the decisions. So some business processes inside those customers who are your ideal customer profile. And indeed, you're going to speak about the way they are going to use your product on a daily basis to have huge success. Right, once the profiling is over, you're going to use it as a strategy for the next activities of your business. Well, indeed, you're going to use the ideal customer profile for searching for the new customers. If you have the teams or a person focusing on the cold sales, indeed, they're going to profile or to qualify the possible customers before getting in touch with them. Yeah, so it helps you to avoid wasting the time on the irrelevant perspectives. And if you are generating leads with ads, you're going to configure the ads as precise as possible using the ideal customer profile. Once you started generating the flow of leads, you're going to provide some demonstrations to them, right? So your sales team or the pre-sales team is going to have the demo with your potential customers. And that's where you need their pains, their targets, and also some other important points for that type of companies. So your demo version is going to be around what really matters to your ideal customer profile. When you start hiring new people, you're going to teach them about your customers using the ideal customer profile. That is probably the number one thing you're going to do so that your new team members are not going to waste their time. And of course, ideal customer profile is a guideline for your product team. 
So they're going to work on the product strategy and the new features using the ideal customer profile because the product should uh, bring success to them, right? In a nutshell, the ideal customer profile framework helps you to focus on what is really supposed to bring profit to your company, to your business, to your product and to all of your teams. So the ideal customer profile also unites all the teams around one goal and everyone is working on one and the same type of customer and the business processes are all around it. So just uh, create the ideal customer profile and start rocking your metrics. Please share in comments if you are already using the ideal customer profile framework and how it actually affected the growth of your product. See you in the next videos.